Hey guys, this is Jackie from QT here. Uh, joining us today is Shannon Cook. You may recognize him from such shows as Degrassi, Rookie Blue, and most recently, a well, movie, The Conjuring. Hey, hey Shannon, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so yeah, you know, just to do a quick interview, uh, you know, just to let the fans uh, out there get to know you a bit more if they, you know, haven't already heard these questions. But uh, number one, so we actually went onto Google and we typed in, you know, is Shannon Cook dot 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 dot. You know, those, you know, those uh, predicted results come up. Yeah. And uh, so these are the most popular searches. So maybe you can help us answer them. So number one, is Shannon Cook Korean? Uh, no, it's funny though because my surname is sort of Korean. But uh, it actually is a Korean surname. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm mixed. I'm South African. My mother's from South Africa. My dad's from Mauritius. He's, it's a Creole island with, where the dodo's from and stuff. It's a French colony. It's between South Africa and Australia. It's next to like Reunion and Seychelles. Is Shannon Cook straight? Yeah, I get that all the time. You know, I used to kind of, I used to avoid it when I first came out shooting when the, when the stories first aired because I didn't want to detract from the story and then I thought well I should just be honest but now I'm kind of at the point where I kind of feel like maybe I, sh I don't know if I should be making it the issue or it should be uh, okay the last one of the Google searches is Shannon Cook single or well, right now I yeah I mean <laughs> uh, that could change I mean, who knows, <laughs> by the time you see this yeah I'm single uh, yeah I'm single Go. What advice do you have for someone who wants to follow in your footsteps? Because you have some footsteps that, you, <laughs> that you've left behind. Thanks, man. Uh, well, I think the hardest thing is hearing your own voice. We get told a lot of things by media, who to be, who to be as an Asian man, who to not be as an Asian man, who to be as a gay man, a, you know, a, a man, what, what's a man, and now women are becoming women. And how are you a man? Because the, the being a man is, is kind of old school, being a man when you're trying to exist with women being women. When you kind of list the qualities of what makes a woman and what makes a man, they're pretty much the same thing. I don't think one goes against the other. Uh, so your voice is a hard thing to hear with, with society and stuff. And I think that's the, the biggest question is what you... You go to bed with yourself, you wake up with yourself. You will die with yourself. It doesn't matter what people say or what they feel, it's your conscience that has to live with, with things. So, um, you don't, you can't tell what's going to happen in five or ten years and you can sit there writing theories and drawing charts and stuff. Yeah. I decided to become an actor because that's what spoke to me at the time and I knew I regretted not doing it at that time and I said, you know what, I can change my path. I have a life, I'll be fine. Mm. I see people with BSCs working in Quiznos mm. uh, serving me and Everyone struggles no matter what they do. So as long as you're happy doing what you're doing, and if you change your mind tomorrow, that's fine. Uh, but it's really about hearing what you want and filtering out the, the, the buzz from, from all the external bombardment. Uh, and then following that, and you, it's okay to change your mind. It's okay, you don't have to know. No one knows, right. no one knows. And no one has, really has answers. We can act like we have answers. I don't have the answers, but for me right now, that's kind of what, what works for me. And maybe think of what you would tell yourself uh, if you, you know, see yourself in 10 years and what, what, you, what, what you would tell yourself. But uh, don't follow in my footsteps, that's for sure. Um, just, it's really, it's really about being happy. Uh, and, uh, Sounds like it, you're just sort of being honest with yourself. Man. Yeah, I saw one chart that said, like, does this make you happy? There was a yes and a no. And uh, the no said, try something else and the yes said you know keep going that way yeah, yeah. something like that that's not quite accurate but it was so simple mosquito bit me it's so simple <laughs> they love my blood so simple but so uh it made a lot of sense and now in situations i'll be like well yeah i guess i just got to change change part that doesn't really work for me but yeah um do you <laughs> basically what are your next steps for 2013 like and especially as an actor as a creative person how do you keep hungry? Because I know some people, when they achieve a lot of things that you've achieved, they might just lie back and be like, oh, you know, I made it. Oh, I have these fans now. Oh, I'm in a movie. Oh, it's, everything's set for me. How do you stay hungry so you, you can keep improving? Because like you said, like, nobody's perfect. Everybody's going through struggles. So how do you keep fighting struggles in order to keep improving yourself? Funny hearing you say that because I, I feel like I have so much way to go. Uh, I, I've, I've, 
I don't feel like I can sit back at all. And you know, there's also a, a part of an acting teacher said to me once. You know, he said, you know, if I really have this and this, I'll be happy one day. And then he got that, and he wasn't happy at all. And we tend to, as a society, we always find a way to see the glass as half empty. You get things, you get those achievements. I got into this really great school, and then I just didn't feel satisfied. I got into the show, and then I still felt incompetent. And you know, there's always more bombardment like buy this, feel fulfillment, you know, the you know the perfect life, or get this. I don't know. Um, how do I? I mean, I I worry about rent. I work. I I work, uh, and I'm happy to work. Like. I remember cleaning up vomit, uh, being a busboy, and uh, working really crazy hours, and um, thinking to myself, I really like this, that I'm doing this, because I don't want to be someone that just got this on a silver spoon, right. and it just kind of fell into my lap as like a 12-year-old, and I've never had to work a job, or didn't like feeling like that, so I liked that I was actually having to work for stuff. It makes the victories feel, it gives you perspective, it gives you... I, the first show I booked was in one of the biggest, best theaters in the country. So nice. And I, I remember walking in feeling kind of disappointed, thinking, this is so great. But I, for me, this is not nearly as great as it is for the people who've done this for 20 years and this is their first time because they know how lucky they are. And I know I'm lucky, but I just viscerally, I don't know. Um, I think I'm straying from the question. But uh, how do I stay hungry? Or Oh, it's, uh, how do you stay hungry and like how does that... Uh... How do you say? Plan out your, st your next steps for the year, 2013. Oh, 2013. Yeah. Well, I'm doing a movie with Charlie Theron um, and Chloe Moritz from Carrie and Kick Eyes. Ty Sheridan, he just did a movie with uh, Matthew McConaughey and Brad Pitt as his son in Tree of Life. Really excited about this role. Right. Really excited. And to me, to work with a South African who's a hero of mine, yeah. big deal for me. Um, so that's coming up later this year. Till then, I'm just going to be trying to pay my rent. It's tough. Everyone thinks it's a red carpet. I work in a bar, and people every every shift are like, "Why are you working here? Aren't you famous?" Or now you're just some washed-up nobody, huh? And um, uh, <laughs> that's exactly how they sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a real stereotype. I just did. But uh, yeah, it's just it, it's not a red carpet, and we all have to work for what we want. Uh, and you know, people. I, I remember reading Ang Lee's story about how he got to his point after he won his Oscars and he had a really hard road. And I thought to myself, well, I'm just as much of a culprit as everyone else because I thought life was great for him. And he really struggled and worked for that stuff. You read Ford or any, any successful person, they've had a, a rough road ahead of them. Right. But people tend to assume that they just fall into their lap and they brush it off and make themselves feel better for not doing anything for what they want. Just like, okay, well, that just kind of happened for them. Um, but uh, 2013, I'm just uh, auditioning um, and, and working. And, uh, and uh, as for how to know what's coming ahead, I don't know. But uh, I just kind of, kind of keep trying to check in and surrounding myself with honest people. Yeah. Um, and uh, smile along the way. Awesome. Hey. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. Thank you, Thank you Shannon. Man. Like, this has been like a really awesome opportunity just to talk to you, get to know you a bit more. You too, man. Uh, you too. For the fans out there, or for any you know in, in, aspiring actors out there, you know, I hope really this really helped you. Shannon seems to be really honest, down to earth, you know, cool guy. And uh, thanks, so thanks so much for watching this, guys. <laughs> Cheers. What was your reaction the first time you finally you know? Fuck. What was your first reaction when you? Found? Shannon's making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's too much tension here. Right, no, no. Shannon's Sh 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 making me nervous, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome that you're here, but I was like, oh, maybe he should have. <laughs> I need to stand it. I need to stand it. Somebody less good looking. <laughs> Give me that geeky guy.